Today I'm at my work table because I have a project. This is a battery charger that I bought recently and it seems to do the job. I needed to charge a car battery. I charged it up and now I have a battery charger. But it's missing something rather conspicuous. I could have gotten this feature but it would have cost twice as much and I'm cheap. The feature it's missing is this. A volt and current meter and it has a perfect spot to put it right there so my project is going to be to open this up and hope I can find space and cut a hole and mount this volt and current meter right there so let's get started and find out what's inside this thing and see if it's going to be a lot of trouble or not so if we flip it over I can see there's four bolts in here to take it apart so let's get started there Anything under here that looks like it might have to come out? Uh, there's another bolt right there, but it looks like that holds the handle on. Let's hope that we've got everything out we need to get out. Ah, yeah, there it came right apart. And there go my screws right off the table. I'll never see those again. There. Now I have two screws. Put those over there. Okay, here it is. Now let's look inside. We want to put this right there it goes down about three quarters of an inch maybe almost an inch if i have to i could cut this up and make it a little shallower and maybe glue it together uh, but i just want to be able to cut a square hole and just shove it in so let's see what we're looking at here there's the inside and let's see where does this need to go it needs to go right there and as you can see already we have a heat sink and a capacitor and possibly that coil in the way. Let's see. If that coil's in the way, I'm going to really have trouble. I think... Trying to look in there, see if you can see in the camera. It's going to sit about that deep. So... I think I can squeeze it in there. I may have to cut a few things. I may have to chop this up a little bit, but I think I can move that capacitor. The heat sink's going to be a bigger problem. The capacitor I can just unsolder. It's, it's actually glued in place here, but I can unsolder the capacitor and put some wires on it and uh, stick it somewhere else. The heat sink's going to be more problematic. Looks like we have a fan here. Looks like it sucks air in this side, blows it across the heat sinks and then out the other side and I don't see any way to do this other than to uh, grind down that heat sink until it makes enough room to squeeze in our unit. Let me take these wires off so I can see how it's going to fit a little better. I guess I could have that stick out just a little bit. I'd rather have it flush if I can. So. There's how much room I've got. Let's see if we can look inside there. It's going to sit right about like that. So the edge of this will be right on the edge of that. So I can look across and yeah. I don't know if you can see that there. I have to lose about an eighth of an inch off the capacitor. Uh, but looking at it, I think, I think that's not going to be in the way. So I can grind down that heat sink. I'm a little concerned about that because, of course, if I grind down the heat sink, it's going to lose some effectiveness. Maybe I can uh, do something about that. But uh, I guess we shall get started with that. Okay, we need to start by pulling the circuit board out of there. So it looks like it's held on with one, two, looks like three screws. Let's give that a quick... And what if I should pull that fan off the board just to, you know, it just slides right out of there. Let's pull the whole thing out. Okay, we have separated everything from that part of the package. So what I'm up against here, just got to cut through this glue here to get the capacitor off. There's goo on the transistor or whatever that is. Could be a transistor, could be a silicon controlled rectifier. This is held in place by two solder points, one there, one there, and then the transistor. I wonder if I should pull that out with the transistor as one piece. 
and then grind that down with a grinder. Probably be easier to leave the transistor on the heat sink than to remove it. So I'm going to have to unsolder the transistor, the heat sink, and this capacitor and grind that down, solder things back into place. Let's go get my soldering iron and get to work. Okay, I have my ancient Weller soldering iron here. Ancient, but it works very well. Haven't used this in a while. The tip looks like it used a little work, but it tinned up okay, so we're ready to go. So what I need to do is I have a been around a while. I have some ancient tools here. So here's a old-timey spring-loaded solder sucker. And so let's start unsoldering. Okay, here comes the most worrisome part of this. Uh, I'm going to be grinding this down about uh, almost three-eighths of an inch so that I can fit that in there and I'm grinding away part of the heat sink. I'm a little concerned about that, but eh, it's not that much of a heat sink anyway. We will, we will see what it does. Here goes, stand by for noise. Pull it off again. Okay, so uh, cut those grooves in it to give it a little more surface area and hopefully Help it cool, and let's go start putting things back together. Okay, let's see what we can do about that capacitor. I have some 16 gauge Radio Shack speaker wire that's been around a while here. We will uh, take a short length of that. Now, I'm usually not crazy about this type of wire stripper, but I think it might be appropriate for this particular application. So, there we... <laughs> yeah! And it actually worked. Just had to give it a little bit of help there. Uh, it doesn't have enough grip. I have to give it a little squeeze. There we go. Just needed a little bit of help. So I need to split this back a little bit here. On both ends. There we go. And I will start by soldering this to the board, I think. That's what we got here, let's see. I'm gonna put the positive end on the little stripey thing here. Let's see if it'll go in there. Yeah, it'll fit if I give it enough twisting. twisting. Okay, if you look at these cords, you'll see there's one end that's stripey, the other end that's smooth. And it's going right in. Okay, those are soldered in place. The other ends I will tin and then solder to the capacitor after clipping them to the proper length. I 
think there'll be sufficient separation there. I don't think it'll be productive to try to put heat shrink on them or anything. On the other hand, yeah, I think I will. And of course, I don't have any heat shrink of the proper size, so this will have to do. Well, that's a tight squeeze, tight squeeze there. Get it far enough away that it's very unlikely to get heated enough to shrink. When I solder the capacitor on there. Okay, hope that's far enough away. Okay, now we got the make sure we get everything polarized properly. We don't want any exploding capacitors. Let's get some extra solder on these lugs here. Okay, positive goes here. Okay, and negative goes here. And now I can put that capacitor just about anywhere I need to. Now let's put this back in its place. Okay. We should be back in business.